No, your eyes are not deceiving you. I am back in the Room of Doom, also known as my office. Um, impolitely, you'd probably call it something like an incel room, but it is my office, and I'm not an incel. You've probably noticed on quite a lot of my videos that I am a massive fan of physical media. Yeah, this is a cracker, by the way. If you don't know it's uh, not a cracker or you've never seen it, then... You've been. Today we are gonna really embrace the physical media and we are gonna look at this. Yep, it's physically there, it's not media, but we are gonna use this little thing as a Plex server for all my physical media that's out of shot that you can't see. Trust me, it's there. Right, let's get straight to the point. What is this? Well, in order to tell you that, I'm gonna show you what it is on the Amazon website so I'm just gonna shrink myself down into the bottom corner of your screen and we'll take a look. The year was 2018 the month was September and I reviewed a device called the Minis Forum Z83-F I reviewed it and benchmarked it and it had a Cherry Trail X5 Z8350 Atom processor in it. I very quickly wrote the device off and though I didn't say it in these specific words, I concluded that it was absolutely shit. You're probably thinking, why on earth am I doing a video now on a pretty similar device with even less RAM? So this is a Wintel Pro. Now we'll just go and have a look at how we can get one of these. So if you search for Z8350 on Amazon, then you will get a stack load of devices that contain the Cherry Trail processor that's in this and that Minis Forum Z83F and what you will be presented with is stacks of them um, however this Wintel Pro always seems to be in stock available on Prime and it is dirt cheap so it comes with 2 gigabytes of RAM 32 gigabytes of storage and it's got the as previously mentioned about three times the uh, Intel Atom X5 Z8350 when you have a look on YouTube or on Reddit or any tech channel that mentions Plex the chances are you will be told "Ooh, you need a very beastly computer in order to run Plex and run various streams all at once but because this has got a cherry trail processor in it it has Intel QuickSync Video. I've mentioned Intel QuickSync Video a few times. I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of it. However, what it does is on the fly it re-encodes video which is perfect for Plex. You do have to have a Plex pass to enable hardware encoding. If you rely on this thing for software encoding you're not going to get very far. Um, you might manage one stream but it might be very, very laggy or very buffery. Uh, is buffery a word? It is now. Right, okay, so for $89.99, you get the Wintel Pro. And, yeah, don't really need to go into it very much. It's got, well, USB 3 port, very handy for your external storage. USB 2 port, uh, micro SD slot, of which I've got a micro SD card in there. And then on the back we've got audio, jack, ethernet, HDMI, another USB and DC in, 5 volts. Three amp. Realistically on the Wintel Pro, you're not going to be able to do much other than use it as a server. You can play some light games on there, it'll run Minecraft at 1080p. Uh, but we are specifically looking at it for the ability to stream video. Multiple streams of streamed video at 1080p across the internet. When you actually go on the Intel website and take a look at the Atom X5Z8350 uh, it does say that it's Cherry Trail and it does tell us when it was launched etc. Um, it gives us the base frequency so it's quad core with four threads and so it runs at 1.44 gigahertz each core um, and 1.92 turbo but it does get very hot when it's in turbo. Uh, now the really cool thing about this 
is, well, other than what I've already just mentioned, it runs on two watts of electricity. So, let's just have a quick look at how much that's going to cost you to leave on all of the time. So I've worked it out here on this uh, wonderful, um, well, electricity cost calculator that Google brought me to called Sustit. Never heard of it, but they've got a really cool calculator on there. So if we leave this on for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, then the energy consumption at 2 watts, if we use it for 730 hours, which is the average number of hours in a month in a year, so in order to get that I've done 24 times 365, as in 24 hours for every day of the year, then divided that by 12 so this will actually only cost you 25.96p, or well, let's call it 26p, shall we, a month. So that's that's nothing. Uh, if we compare that to, say, your average high-end processor plus graphics card, uh, which we're going to be looking at probably at least 100 watts, it's going to cost you 12.98 a month. So, I'll just get my trusty calculator out on the actual screen. You can see there I've uh, had to use a calculator to work out how many hours in a month. But that's not too embarrassing. I'm pretty sure not many people can do that off the top of the head. So, what we will look at is 12.98 times 12, which is 155 pounds and 76 pence in order to run. A 100 watt server. Now, if we just get back our previous results, so 26 pence a month, if we times that by 12, we have £3.12p. So this little bad boy will actually pay for itself within a year if you're replacing something that runs on about 100 watts. Now, I am very pro Save the Planet, uh, well, I am for the duration of this video, because saving that amount of money, in my opinion, is absolutely brilliant. So within two years, this will have paid for itself, and it will have paid for your Plex Pass. Uh, plus, obviously you need storage for this, so... Uh, obviously that meant, that's going to depend on how many... Um... That is entirely going to depend on what content you do put on your Plex server as to how much space you will need. But the beauty is, uh, if you get uh, an external powered USB hub, you could connect up tons and tons of external drives to this. Uh, or alternatively, you can just use the two USB sockets that are already on there. And you will have plenty of space if you get a big enough hard drive. Portable hard drives, you'll only be able to use those. If you use a full-size one in a caddy, you're probably going to need uh, to use the power. In fact, you're not probably, you actually are. So what I'm going to use is, I have this Seagate 4TB drive, and this actually contains all of my films, so very handy, and I've got about a terabyte left. So I'm going to go and buy some Blu-rays now, and I'm going to fill that hard drive, then I'm going to get another one with all the money that I've saved not using electricity. So that's it for today's video. If you'd like to help my channel out and you're considering buying one of these or buying one of the hard drives etc then please use the links below as it does help me out. If you're not following me on social media then please do so. I tend to be most active on Twitter. If you've not yet subscribed then why not? All it takes is for you to click the button down there and I will be very, very appreciative of it. I do eventually want to get to 100,000. Uh, I realise I am miles off that. But there's a space on my wall behind me where I could put my plaque or whatever it is you get. It's going to be a while, but subscribe to Tomo's Tech. That is all I'm saying for now. I'll see you in the next one.